Today it is written comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 and 15. It says, My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. Be blessed. Hello there boys and girls. This is Pastor B together with you this morning. Hope you are enjoying our services and I would love to remind you that our services are back bigger and better. If you are around, do not mind to pay us a visit, do not mind to give us a call because Calvary Worship Center, Calvary Kidron is the place to be kids in divine service. Well, today we are learning about choosing your friends wisely. Choosing your friends wisely, why? Because wrong friends will always lead us down the wrong road or path. Our text for today is coming from Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. And it says that if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. Do not go along with them. Do not set your foot on their path. Boys and girls, hope you are ready for today's Bible lesson. Well, Last week we learned about wisdom and we saw that the wisest man in the Bible was King Solomon. But considering today's service, even though he was the wisest man to ever live, he was the father of a very foolish son, sorry to say so. That son was a man by the name of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was made king right after his father. Shortly after he took the throne, the people came to him with this one request. King Rehoboam, the heir to the throne of David, Solomon's son, your father put a heavy burden on us, but we have this one request, just one request. If you will lighten the hard labor and the heavy burden, we will serve you forever and you will be king forever. Now, hold on a minute. Rehoboam was just, Rehoboam has just become king. He doesn't have any experience, yet now he's going to make and is about to make a big decision. Let's see how he answers the people. This is now King Rehoboam speaking. My people, go away and in three days, exactly three days, come back to me and I will give you an answer. So the people went away and Rehoboam decided to speak with the elders. The older men who had been around since the days of his wise father, King Solomon. 
men who had been advisors to the wisest man who ever lived, men who had knowledge about making decisions. Rehoboam speaking, how would you advise me to answer these people? One of the elders stood up and said, if you today deserve if you today decide to serve the people and give them a good answer, then and only then will they always be your servants. Now Rehoboam had their advice. He knew they had experience and understanding. But the Bible says that he rejected their advice. Instead of li listening to their wise words, he decided to go to his friends the guys that he had grown up with to see what they had to say about these things. So Rehoboam turns to his friends and asks, What is your advice, my fellow friends? What should we say to these people who are asking me to lighten their body? One of the friends stood up tall and took his place. Tell the people, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father put a heavy burden on you, but I will make it even heavier. So three days later, the people went back to see Rehoboam, but he didn't listen to the ed elders' advice. He rejected their experience, their knowledge, and their understanding, and also their wisdom. And he instead went with what his young friend said to him. He replied harshly to the people saying, My father put a heavy burden on you, but I will make it even heavier for you. When the people heard that, do you know what happened? They revolted. Rehoboam even had to run away and they wanted another king in his place. Take a look at this illustration. The kingdom of Israel divides, 1 Kings 11:26 through 12, 33. After King David died, his son Solomon became king of Israel. Solomon asked God for wisdom, and God granted his request by making him the wisest man in the world. God also blessed Solomon with much wealth. He was not only the wisest man in the world, he was also the richest. Solomon didn't follow after God all the days of his life. As he grew older, he stopped loving and serving God and served idols instead. God was not happy with Solomon. Soon Solomon would learn the consequences of his disobedience to God. When Solomon's builders were adding an addition to Jerusalem and repairing the city's walls, Solomon noticed that Jeroboam was a skilled worker. So Solomon made Jeroboam a leader over some workers. But working for Solomon was hard. Jeroboam began to resist Solomon and even became his enemy. God had chosen Jeroboam to be a ruler of Israel after Solomon died. Jeroboam would find this out in an interesting way. One day, the prophet Ahijah met Jeroboam on the road out of Jerusalem. Ahijah took Jeroboam's coat and tore it into twelve pieces. Then he said to Jeroboam, Take ten pieces of this coat, for God has said he will tear the kingdom away from Solomon and will give you ten tribes to rule. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, will rule over only two tribes because Solomon has brought idol worship into the land. Solomon has not continued to obey God like his father David did. God challenged Jeroboam to live right and obey God's commands. If Jeroboam obeyed God, God would be with him and would give his family the throne in Israel for generations to come. When Solomon found out about God's message to Jeroboam, he tried to kill Jeroboam. Jeroboam fled to Egypt. He returned to Israel only after he heard Solomon was dead. Meanwhile, the Israelites crowned Solomon's son Rehoboam. Jeroboam and the people came to Rehoboam and said, Your father Solomon made us work very hard. Please make it easier for us. If you do, we will serve you. The people hoped Rehoboam would lighten their heavy workload. Rehoboam answered, Come back in three days. I will have an answer for you then. Rehoboam asked some of Solomon's advisors what they thought he should do. They answered, The people will serve you if you are like a servant to them, and they will always work for you if you speak kindly to them. 
But Rehoboam did not listen to the advice of Solomon's advisors. Instead, he asked his friends how they would answer the people. The friends told Solomon to say, My little finger is stronger than my father's whole body. My father made you work hard, but I will demand that you work even harder. My father used whips to punish you, but I will use whips with sharp tips to punish you. Three days later, Jeroboam and the people came back. King Rehoboam treated the people rudely and did what his friends told him to do. He said, My father made you work hard, but I will demand you work even harder. My father used whips to punish you, but I will use whips with sharp tips to punish you. King Rehoboam thought his decision would make him richer. God knew Rehoboam's decision would split the kingdom of Israel. That was God's plan. The Israelites rejected Rehoboam as their king and returned to their homes. Rehoboam believed he could force the Israelites to serve him. He sent Adoram, the officer in charge of forced labor, to talk to them. But the Israelites stoned Adoram to death. King Rehoboam fled to Jerusalem in his chariot. The ten northern tribes of Israel wanted their own king. They would never serve Rehoboam. They made Jeroboam their king, just as the prophet had said. Rehoboam gathered 180,000 soldiers from the remaining two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Rehoboam thought he could take back his kingdom by military force, but God used the prophet Shemaiah to change Rehoboam's mind. The prophet told the king and his people that the Lord had divided the kingdom. God did not want Rehoboam fighting against Israel. Rehoboam and the people listened and obeyed the word of the Lord. Jeroboam, however, did not listen to the Lord. He made two golden calves for the ten tribes who followed him. Jeroboam put one calf in northern Israel and one in southern Israel. The ten tribes disobeyed God and worshipped the golden calves instead of worshipping God. Even though none of us are kings, God still wants us to listen to Him. We should take time every day to talk to God in prayer. We need to read His Word and learn more about Him, so we will learn to trust and obey Him. When the people heard that, do you know what happened? They revolted. Rehoboam had to run away and they wanted another king in his place. Why? Because he didn't listen to the wise counsel of the older people. If only he had listened to the wise counsel instead of just turning to his friends for a major decision, things would have turned out much different. And it's the same for you and me in this life. When you have big decisions in your life, you need to listen to the wise counsel of the older people around you. Talk to someone who is older than you, wiser than you, who knows some things about life, and who is a strong Christian. Turn to them to help you make big decisions rather than just turning to your friends that you are always around and that you've grown up with. Chances are they won't have much wisdom to offer you. But if you listen to the wise counsel from someone who is older than you, it will be much better and really helpful. If Rehoboam had actually listened to the wise counsel of his elders, then things would have turned out differently for him. But he didn't listen. He had to suffer the consequences of that poor decision. His friends led him down the wrong path. He needed to be wiser in choosing his friends, and so do you. Choose your friends wisely. Stay tuned to the next session. Bye. As we continue with our lesson today, thank you very much once again for tuning in and being this faithful. Learning how to choose wise friend is one decision that we all have to make. It's one thing that we all have to do. We have to learn how to choose our friends wisely for ourselves. Why? Because birds of the same feather flock together. We will always want to do what our friends are doing. If my friends are out there playing football, I will most likely be playing football with them. If my friends are going out for a game night, I will be there tagging along leading the way if my friends have a bad attitude i will most likely develop a bad attitude without knowing because friends have a level of influence in our lives so that means that 
before we make anybody our friend we have to determine the kind of people they are god wants us to bring close to us those who are walking right before him because those who fear god will lead us to god those who, who love god will influence us to love god we need to choose our friends wisely before we choose our friends we have to do a friends test have you ever done a friends test asking yourself a series of questions of who or what kind of person is that before we allow them to come and this one does not mean that you reject other people this one does not mean that god does not love everybody god loves everybody but you've got no business hanging around other people who are doing wrong things unless you are sharing the gospel of christ to them we've got no business hanging around negative people or wrong people so they are wrong not because god does not love them but they are wrong because they might influence us in the wrong direction and you do not want to be like that so boys and girls we are going to do a friend's test and today i have with me one of my friends on the other room he can say hi to you benson kindly say hi to everybody hi yes so i'm going to ask benson a series of questions if it is the right friend he needs to put a tick and if it is the wrong kind of person he needs to put an x on that and let me give you a secret i'm going to use a buzzer to confuse it stay tuned so we are going to do the friends test game with one and only benson so i'm going to ask a few questions here and you're going to determine for ourselves who is a good friend and who is a bad friend if it's a good friend benson put a tick and if it's a bad friend put an x especially when i press the buzz okay are we ready yeah okay benson is ready and i hope you are also ready so to question number one on the friends test a friend who loves god tick okay let us go to question number two a friend who goes to sunday school every single sunday you are doing well the third question a friend who helps you cheat exams okay you are doing good you are doing good number four a friend who plays the a friend who plays games the whole day aha uh -huh, we are choosing our friends wisely aha uh -huh. number five a friend who shares his or her lunch Okay. A friend who has a bad attitude, quick. A friend who gossips a little. A friend who gossips a little. A friend who gossips a lot. Okay. A friend who is honest. And a friend who listens to the teacher okay benson you've answered your questions now step aside a little bit so that we look at the kind and uh, we look at the kind of friends that you have okay the first one is a friend who loves god he has got a tick a friend who goes to sunday school he has got a tick a friend who cheats exam that's a wrong friend you don't want to be around people who cheat exams especially those ones who wants to help you cheat exams you finally uh, it, things will not turn out right for you uh -huh, we see Benson is very wise in choosing his friends a friend who plays games the whole day uh, there is nothing wrong with playing games but surely somebody who plays games the whole day that's not a good friend a friend who shares his lunch uh -huh, that's a very good friend and a good example a friend who has a bad attitude that's somebody that you don't want to be close to benson has got his friends right a friend who gossips a lot that's an x on benson you don't want a friend who gossips a lot and a friend who gossips a little benson has a tick on a friend who gossips a little do you want a friend who gossips a little 
gossip in itself is wrong so Benson you are going to improve on that you don't want a friend who gossips at all whether he gossips a lot or a little but you have chosen well uh-huh it's number nine a friend who is always honest we love honest people a friend who listens to the teacher aha a tick so you've got nine out of ten so let us clap for benson Woo! thank you we've seen the kind of friends that benson has for himself wow that was so beautiful and i am sure that we all can do that kind of a test a friend's test so ask yourself what kind of person are they or are they god fearing are they loving are they humble are they honest you want honest people for your friends you want people who are respectful to the elders for your friends you want people who are always being rewarded for doing the right thing to be your friends because more likely or not you will develop that character in you as well or maybe after going through this friend test and you realize that you're the kind of person that we call the wrong kind of friend you know what this one should not condemn you you should just ask God God make me to be the right kind of friend to my friends because when we do that we'll be glorifying our father in heaven so I'm going to pray for us before we move to the next session father we thank you today we bless you Almighty oh God we worship you Lord thank you father for your faithfulness thank you father for your love toward us Almighty oh God that in while we were sinners of oh God you gave us your son oh God to take our place of sin to take our punishment Almighty oh father because your word says that we all are fallen short of the glory of God and we all know God that the wages of sin is death Lord you have forgiven us oh God especially as who have confessed that you are our Lord Jesus Christ we pray today oh God that you may give us that spirit of wisdom so that we may be able to choose our friends wisely Lord we want to associate ourselves with people who fear you oh God with people mighty God who respect you oh God with people who honor your name oh God Abba, Father, Lord, we pray today that you may help us, O oh God, to be those kind of friends to our neighbors, O oh mighty God, to be loving and caring and compassionate, O oh mighty God, that we, O oh mighty God, may reflect your image, O oh mighty God, to those who are around us, O oh mighty Father. Lord, I pray, O oh mighty God, that we, O oh Lord, that we may always make wise decisions, O oh mighty God, even during hard times, so mighty God, even when everybody is doing the wrong kind of thing. Lord, I pray, oh God, that we may be wise enough, oh God, to follow your path, the path that you prepared for us. Lord, I pray, oh God, your spirit, oh mighty Father, Lord, of freedom, of liberty, oh mighty God, among your people, mighty Father, to free them, Father, from any form of fear in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, because you are the one who watches over us, oh mighty Father. Lord, I pray, oh mighty God, that you, oh God, may bless your people, may bless your children, oh mighty God, give them that hope, oh mighty Father, as they continue with their schooling this season, oh God. Lord, oh mighty God, I pray, oh Father, that your hands may rest upon them. All our candidates, oh Lord Jesus, we lift them up to you, oh God, and we pray, oh God, a prayer, oh God, of soundness, of peace, oh my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for all our teachers, oh mighty God, even now as we have resumed church every single week almighty god lord i pray father that you may watch over us and protect us almighty god father from this pandemic oh god that we may be set free to come and worship you lord to come and seek your face oh god in freedom and in liberty i pray all this trusting and believing in jesus name amen amen stay tuned for the story time i do hope and pray that your week after this will be blessed bye hello boys and girls and welcome to today's life lesson my name is teacher francis and i am so excited to tell today's story which is a story about love i hope 
each and every one of you. We pay keen attention to the lessons that we've been taught today and you will enjoy. Okay? Hello boys and girls and welcome to today's life's lesson. Today we're going to listen to a story of love. Now sit back and enjoy. Vacation! Sanuk and Sandy the surfboats shouted as they ran out of school straight towards the beach. They had lived and grown up together in Maui, Hawaii. Since they were in kindergarten, they were best friends and they did everything together. Their favorite thing was riding big waves. They threw their books, bags into the sand and jumped right into the first wave. As they were having fun playing in the waves, Sanuk suddenly noticed something shiny floating a little further into the ocean. Sandy, look, he said. He called his friend who was riding a huge wave. I'm gonna go check this shiny thing out. He swam over and saw that it was a bottle and inside was a small piece of paper. Together, they read the message. Help! I'm stuck on this island. Come quickly. From Baxter Boogie. Bold. Quick, said Sanuk. We need to go help. We need to go help him. You're coming? He said. Of course, she an uh, Sandy answered. I'm your friend. I'm, I'm not going to let you go by yourself. As fast as they could, they swam into the deep ocean to find the island. They were already quite tired when they finally saw it in the distance. They swam ashore, but there was nobody. Baxter! Sandy yelled. We are here to help you! Still no answer. All they could hear were birds chirping. It was a beautiful small island with lots of palm trees and colorful flowers. I think we should go back, said Sandy. I think someone played a trick on us. No way, Sanuk said with de determination. I'm gonna go and find Baxter. So they started walking deeper and deeper into the island, looking for footprints or anything that could lead them to Baxter. Suddenly, they heard a voice from behind. Yo, dude! Welcome to my little lovely island. Sanuk and Sandy turned around in shock. My name is Baxter, he said with a sneaky smile on his face. We've been looking for you. Everywhere, said Sandy. Your bottle message said you needed help. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I do need your help. Let me show you, he answered. Baxter pulled out an old looking map and unfolded it in front of them. Look here, he said enthusiastically, just a few miles from me. Here is a cliff called the Golden Oyster. There are tons of oysters attached to the rock and the cliff filled with valuable pearls inside of them. Sanuk's eyes lit up at the thought of precious pearls. Since I'm just a small boogie board, I can't reach them, Baxter continued. And that's why I need your help to ride the big wave around the cliff. You could reach the pearl and we could all be rich. Baxter, Baxter had it all planned out. No way, said Sandy firmly. That's way too dangerous. Let's go, Sanuk. She's, she was already walking back. The way she came. Wait said Sanuk. I think the idea of collecting valuable pearls and getting rich. He liked the idea. 
I'm gonna stay here with Baxter. Snook stuck close to Baxter. You're making a big mistake, Sandy yelled as she jumped into the ocean. You should listen to your friends instead of that stranger. What a boring friend you've got there, said Baxter as he pulled his hand on Sanuk's shoulder. Let's go. The pirates are waiting for us. Together they jumped into the water on the other side of the island and swam towards the rocky cliff. As they were swimming, the sea started to get darker and colder, churning all around them. The waves were rough and higher than what Sanuk had been used to. Suddenly, they saw a dark shadow swoop underneath them. And another one! Shark! Sanuk screamed. Without warning, one of the sharks jumped up. Whoosh! It, was, it went right past Sanuk's head. Oh! Help me, Baxter, he screamed, but Baxter took his chance to get away onto one of the jagged rocks. You're on your own with that body, he yelled back. The moon swam as fast as he could, ripping through the waves, dodging sharks left and right, and when suddenly a shark jumped out of the water with its jaws wide open. Sanuk was almost at the rock. He was almost safe when crunch! The shark took a big bite off the side of his frame. He made it to the rocks and out of the water, but his frame was totally messed up. Choose your friends wisely. The wrong friends will lead you down the wrong road. That was a close one, Sanuk said as he breathed a sigh of relief. Just then, they heard the sound of a boat approaching. It was a lifeboat. We are here to save you, a voice said from the loudspeaker. It was Sandy. Look at you. You are not the same, she said. Baxter is not a good friend for you. He's just using you. Come back home with me before things get worse. Don't listen to her, Baxter interrupted. We are almost there. Look at all the amazing pearls. Sanuk's eyes darted to Sandy, then to Baxter, and the pearls. And back to Sandy, then back to Baxter, and the beautiful glistering pearls. At the moment, the perfect wave was riding in from the ocean. It was huge. Sanuk knew this was his chance. With one big jump into the ocean, he made his choice. He rode the humongous wave all the way to the top of the cliff. The pearls were even bigger than he had imagined. He took a big leap to grab hold of the biggest pearl he saw when crash he was smashed into the rocky cliff and broken into a thousand pieces why did he choose to be friends with Baxter Sandy said had broken if he had chosen his friends wisely he would still be alive Maybe listening to this lesson, you've realized that the friends you have chosen are wrong. They have been leading you down the wrong path. Right now, you can make the decision to be wise and choose the right friends. Dear God, help me to be wise and know that kind of friends that are around me. Help me to choose the right friends that will lead me down the right road. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. We have now come to the end of our service. Thank you for tuning in till the end. And remember, Kitten is now open and have two services. 
199 a.m. and another at 11 15 a.m. Before we close, let's bow our heads for our program. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your time for us, my Father. As we start a new week, please bless everyone and their parents, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Be blessed and bye. to something good.